Okay, it started. Uh, good after every. Good afternoon, everyone. It's the March 3rd meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. Um, I'm Kathy Shane, I'm chair of the committee, and my first order of business is to call out the names of the committee members to make sure they can see and be heard. And then I will turn it over to Sean to introduce the order of the agenda. So I'm just gonna call out the names as I see them on the screen, Alex. Yes. Anna, Anna. Here. Mandy. Present. Jennifer. Here. And Farah. Here. Okay, we have one more person to join us and we'll, we'll just note when he comes and I'll make sure Irv can hear and be heard. So Sean, I, I know Guilford has a time constraint, so maybe we will just start with Guilford at this point. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody can keep an eye on the attendee list. I'm going to share my screen, um, but if they, someone can keep an eye on it and let me know if Irv joins. Um, sometimes he comes in that way. Okay. I've, I've got it up more or less. Uh, okay. So um, so all the projects. Um, so Guilford Morin, Superintendent of Public Works, is here with us tonight. He's going to walk us through his projects. Um, all of the descriptions were in the, in the packet. Um, and so he, you can refer to those if you have any questions, but I'll turn it over to Guilford and you can start. Good evening, thanks for having me. So uh, as we... Uh, Herb is here, it, uh, Sean, you can promote him. Okay, Sorry, I'll set the stop sharing for one second. Sorry, Sean is host, he's doing multitasking here. I can't, unless he promotes me. All right, you can go ahead, Guilford. Okay, hi. So um, before I start, I kind of want to, I just kind of wanted to say that um, we're having a lot, of, a lot of volatility in pricing right now. So we, we have quotes from vendors, um, and that's what you'll see here for some of the vehicles is actually the quote from the vendor. But the vendors are telling us um, that that probably won't be the price when we go to buy the equipment in July. Um, we had one quote come in, which is actually for a vehicle for next year. And the quote said it was good until March, March 24th. And after that, it needed to be redone. So as, we, as, you, as I tell you the, some of the vehicle and equipment prices, um, please understand that we we may come back and tell you it, it's not enough because the prices have gone up so much. Um, and delivery dates are astronomical right now. It's um, taking a long time to get just about anything. So with that being said, I'll start. Um, the first part of our request are, um, are more, the first two are more programmatic funding things we ask for the transportation plan, which we use that money to take projects, which the, T, the TAC has said we should do. Uh, we take some DPW projects, which we need to move forward. And we take this money and we do surveying or any type of um, data acquisition we need to do before we actually start designing the project. Um, we do not use it, this money. We have not used this money yet to actually hire designers. We use it to just get the information we need to design in house. The stormwater management plan, we're asking for $25,000, and that's kind of the same thing. Um, this is part of our uh, NPDES permit, which is a national pollution something elimination system. Um, so a federal program that the state of Massachusetts has in. Um, and we're starting our program off, and this money, the 25000 is going to probably do a round of outfall testing, of testing where water stormwater leaves the road and enters the streams to uh, start collecting data on our on what's in our stormwater. Well, do we, what type of metals we have in the stormwater, what type of suspended solids we have in the stormwater, how much salt we're actually putting into the stormwater, those types of things. So that's probably what this 25,000 is gonna be used for. And we have some money from last year we'll probably use of that for that too. Um, the next two are the town our money the town puts into the infrastructure of sidewalks and roadways. Um, we have 200,000 in there for sidewalks and we have 750,000 
for road resurfacing. Um, we are, the road resurfacing projects are being bid at this time. This money here will either get used in projects at the end of the construction year, if we still have time, or will be used next construction cycle, which starts, for us, it starts before July 1st. So you have to approve it before, you know, you can't wait until the budget's approved, it has to be approved earlier. Um, we have about two miles, two and a half miles of sidewalk we're proposing to do this year. Um, we haven't confirmed that list with the town manager yet, so I can't give it to you. Um, we are advertising our road repair for next, this season. Um, right now we're doing some sections of small of roads around town. We're doing uh, Russellville Road, we're doing Meadow Street. We have a section of Leverett Road. We have a section of West Pomeroy. Um, we have a few more, which I left my list laying on my desk at work because I was gonna bring it to this meeting and it's still there, um, but we have those. We also have the um, two community development project road projects going on, which aren't included in this money, but just since we're talking road projects, we'll be doing a multi-use path and some road repaving on Mill Lane going to Groff Park that finishes the link of the multi-use path that goes down North Hadley Road, crosses over and we'll go up Mill Lane to Groff Park. And we have some sidewalk uh, CD, CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant project going on on Kellogg Street downtown. We'll replace the sidewalks there and then we're gonna take some of the paving money and repave the road. Um, so that's that one. <clears throat> the, um, the next one down is our, our road repair money, which comes from the state. And this is chapter 90 money. And we take the chapter 90 money and we add it to the town money. And that's how we put together our project. The project we're bidding right now is about $2 million. So it's going to use chapter 90 and town funds to actually cover that whole, that whole project base. Um, so one thing to consider also is construction prices are going up as well. Um, asphalt is liquid asphalt is made from petroleum products. As petroleum products go up, uh, asphalt paving this year will get more expensive. Um, we also have steel for some things in the projects and that those is increasing as well. Um, so that's the, that's the next one, which the 841,000 is chapter 90. Gilford, the, um, the next one, if you want to speak to it, by all means, if you want to leave that for planning when they come, you can also leave it, leave it for planning if you want. The 30,000? Yeah, for the replacement of the audible pedestrian signals. Yeah, I'll leave it to them. They can, yeah. yeah. Just so people know, um, so that was a project that came in from planning. We put it under public works because a lot of things kind of fall under Guilford in ter terms of actually um, implementing them or putting them into action. Um, but it, the planning department will speak to the, the need for that one when they come. We have lots of audible alarms in town and they just go in and out. So they want us to replace them all at one time is really what this is all about. But they have a better story probably. Um, the next one is the $12,000 for street, re street light relamping. And we do this every other year. And we use this to buy additional street lights um, that we use for replacing throughout the system. Uh, the next one is we need to replace a mower in the, public, in the tree and grounds division. Um, so it's roughly an $18,000 mower. Um, we did price an electric mower versus a, a gas mower. And the ele electric mower was about $23,000, $24,000 when we priced it. Um, they are getting better, um, but we're really, not sure we're ready to try one out. This, these are large industrial size mowers. Um, so that's what that, but this is for a, a regular gas powered one. Uh, the $40,000 is what we use for tree removal. If you notice, we have it in the budget every other, every year, um, it goes from 40 to 20. The years we have 40,000 are the years we get rid of all the trees we've collected and stockpiled at Ruxton. So that's tree kind of disposal funds. And then the other 20,000 is what we use to hire cranes, mostly to lift the bigger trees and help us take down the bigger trees. And that's for crane removal, uh, tree crane removals. Um, and then we have some 
some vehicles following that, um, replacing the, the one ton dump and highway, I mean, in tree and grounds, and we're replacing a three quarter ton truck in uh, tree and grounds. Um, and yes, the uh, one ton dump price is significantly higher than it was last year. Um, and it's mostly just steel and it's, they say it's steel prices and is why it's going up, but um, all, all of the vehicles prices are going up. So we're replacing a one ton dump in tree and grounds and we're replacing one in highway. And then one of the three, three quarter ton trucks and tree and grounds and other three quarter ton pickup and highway. Um, and then we're asking to either replace our backhoe or our mini excavator. And we haven't decided which one we want to go with yet. Um, they both they both do a lot of good things for us. The backhoe can also plow snow, um, but the mini excavator really, really works well when we're doing small projects in people's backyards where we have to get to a storm drain or a sewer line that runs through backyards. Um, this is a, a $75,000 is actually the quote for the mini excavator. Um, and that's where we're leaning towards right now. We do have one right now, but it's actually costing more to keep that one running than it is to, uh, it's, it's costing more to keep the thing running than it is helping us right now. So we're proposing to, to get rid of it. And it's over, it's well over 10 years old. Um, so that's everything, a brief description. I know you have lots of questions, so I'll let you ask questions. So I'm looking for um, hands up and Irv, just I wanna check that you can hear and be heard. Okay. I can hear, I, I am assuming I can be heard. You can. And Gilbert, it's really good to see you. Good to see you, Irv. So I'm looking for, I'm not seeing any hands. Um, Mandy. I was trying to wait to let other people. Um, I'm going to keep, since I know you're under time pressures, I'm going to keep my questions to the vehicles. Um, looking in the out years, there's a lot of one ton dump truck purchase, purchases, both in tree and grounds and in highway. Um, you know, four out of five years for tree and grounds and three of five for highway, along with mm, four, it, over those five years, four three-quarter ton pickup trucks. So two questions with that. Number one, can we, given the price difference, do we need that many one tons or can some of them be three-quarter ton? And then the other thing, I tried to count one tons and I, the car, the vehicle inventory is very hard to determine what's a one ton and what is not a one ton, but that seems like a really large number of one ton trucks, um, potentially more than we have assigned to tree and grounds right now, um, those four, I, I couldn't determine how many we had assigned to tree and grounds. So can you talk about how many one ton trucks we have and why there are so many being replaced in the next, I mean, that's, that's um, seven over the next five years between tree and grounds and highway. So I, I could, if I had left my, uh, picked my sheet up off my desk when I was getting my stuff together. Um, <laughs> We have about six right six one tons right now in the highway department. Um, the six we have in highway, they're also they also used for plowing and they also have a little a little sander that goes on the back of them. So they are they're multi roll trucks. They they do more of the they do more of the plowing and then they also are used in um, just regular construction work around town. Um, so th they are a pretty versatile truck. Um, if you want, if you really wanted to like do away with a truck, we would do away with probably a three quarter ton, but th those are more fuel efficient actually. So, and those are better for actually going to and from the job sites where we don't use a lot of the big truck, the one tons or where we have to use the big dump trucks. Um, the FY27 out year, that year is really, those truck, anything in the out year is kind of like just a number out there. It wasn't really, we haven't really decided. Um, we do have three trucks, three one tons coming up for a replacement. And the way we do it, like we say, if, if I don't know which vehicle list you're looking at, whether you're looking at the public works list that we use for ourselves, or if you're looking at the town list, which I assume you're using the town list. Um, 
in the DPW one, we actually try to keep our one ton trucks anywhere from 10 to 15 years. Um, and we have some, we have three in the, in that range that are coming up for replacement. If we did, if you did find the FY27 one in the out year, that would be an early replacement for that truck, just so you know. Um, and the same is true. There's about three, there's three one tons in the tree and grounds division and the out year on 27 is really just a placeholder. We may not need it or may not. We may need it, we may not. Mandy, does that? Okay. Ir Irv has his hand raised. Uh, um, Gilford, I really appreciate um, what you said in relationship to the price fluctuations and uh, anyone who follows the current ec economic scene, as I do, especially if you are an avid reader of uh, such newspapers as the Wall Street Journal, which I have been for the last 30 years. Um, these, the price, the, um, the change, supply chain has been severely disrupted and it will even, it is going to be even more impacted by the events going on in Ukraine. Uh, so all of us should realize that when Guilford says what he says, that, that's really important for us to take into consideration. These prices are, are not going to be something that are going to be stable over any long period of time, if a couple of months, maybe. So I really appreciate it, uh, Guilford. All right. You're welcome. Hi, um, this might be a no brainer question, but when we're talking about road repair, are you talking about fixing potholes or is it more extensive than that? So the money, the money in the capital plan is for more extensive repairs and potholes. This mm -hmm. is the money we use to either overlay a road or to totally rebuild a road or to do um, any of the more in depth repairs. We're, we're, we've done some chip sealing, which is a, a thin overlay, and we're also looking into doing some fog sealing soon. Uh, those are the uh, repairs that are beyond pat, uh, pothole patching, and that's what we use this money for. Okay, thank you. Alex. Thanks, Guilford. Hi. Um, as you know, we're always looking for where we can trim. <laughs> That's, that's our job. So um, just two, uh, three quick questions. Um, you said the cost that you had was for the mini excavator, but you were looking at a backhoe versus an excavator. What, um, do you know what the approximate cost of a backhoe would be? Um, I assume less. Last, well, the last backhoe we bought was a 125. Was, oh, so more, okay. There you go. Good to know. All right. Um, and then the fall testing of stormwater, is that something required by state? Is that something that could be put off if we needed to? How, do, how does that fall in terms of priorities, necessity, mandatory, et cetera? It, it's, it's part of a state permit, which is a, well, it's a, it's a federal permit administrated by EPA and the DEP kind of gets involved in it. But it's a federal stormwater permit, and it, okay. it's we're coming into the, uh, the the term I'm supposed to use is just uh, evading me right now. But we're coming into the phase where we're supposed to start. We've already kind of inventoried this year. We're inventorying our outfalls where the water leaves the pipes. Uh, next year, we're supposed to start actually going through and start testing. So it is in a cycle that's laid out for the program. Great. Thanks. And then the last one that I wanted to ask about was the money for the studies. You said that um, there's money put aside for, for projects um, that are referred from TAC. And you said there was money left over from the current cycle. So I'm wondering, again, is this an area that could be trimmed slightly if needed, since it's sort of an unknown? Not much, just a wee bit. It, it is an unknown what we're going to do next. Um... We have, um, we're just starting to dip into the money that was appropriated last year. So if you think about trimming it back, you'd be dipping into what we do, not really in 20, 
2023, but the end of 2023 and end of 2024. So we, we kind of, the money is there. So it's ready to go when the products are kind of queued up by the transportation advisory committee, what they, what they recommend and what we decided we think we should be doing. And have you found that number to be sort of the right number? I mean, again, I assume it's sort of a loose number because you don't really know what's coming at you. Well, actually, surveying cost is what we've been using it for right now. And they've actually, surveying costs are actually staying really, really competitive and they're really good numbers. Um, a lot of the surveyors are using drones now to help with the surveying. And it seems to be bringing the, well, it seems to be keeping the cost lower. Um, so it's been really, um, we're gonna, sur I mean, we just signed the agreement to do East Pleasant Road to survey East Pleasant for the sidewalk that's been requested there. Um, and that actually came in about 15,000 less than I thought. So the, no okay. the number is a good, pretty good number. It could be cut a little bit if you <laughs> wanted to, if you wanted. Baby haircuts this year, it's, it's, it was worse last year. So <laughs> thanks. Anna. Uh, so I'm not, I, I'm hearing what you're saying, Alex, and I'm not suggesting adding more. This is more of a curiosity, Guilford. You said, um, I, and, and I recognize the kind of cost prohibitive jump to the electric mower. I am curious, you said you weren't ready and I'm curious when you would be, like what would, what would it take for you to feel ready? Is it the crop cost difference? Is it the, the actual mechanics of the mower? When do you anticipate making that switch? Um, it, it's, it, it, it's a good question. It really comes down to reliability and how long they'll run for. Um, we send a mower out and it can be on, it can be mowing for almost six to seven hours a day. Um, so the mower has to be able to have a charge that'll carry that. Um, there, there's actually a mini excavator that's a battery powered one. Um, the mini excavator, they say it only works eight hours. That's it. And after you work eight hours, you need 12 hours to recharge it. So if there's a water main break in the, at night and we've used the excavator during the day, um, you wouldn't be able to use it at night. You have to use one of the other pieces of equipment. Um, so we're, we're kind of hoping that when the, and it seems to be getting there, that reliability is getting there. Um, we're just looking for a little more reliability and length of service. Just Sean. Gilford, um, so we had a resident request um, to study sidewalks, bike lanes on Middle Street. Um, and I had emailed you about this. I, could you just say a little bit about um, how those decisions are made? What, so for example, the, the TAC money, um, is it TAC that sort of prioritizes how that money, you know, what projects are the, uh, that money is spent on or how does that process work? So the, the TAC does see a lot of those projects and they, they make a recommendation of what they're, well, they, they've been a recommendation in the last four years for a project they've put in the queue. So they have three, they have, I guess they have four projects that they said that are important. East Pleasant Street's the one that's on the top right now. Um, uh, North Pleasant sidewalks is in there. And then um, there's two others. I can't think off the top of my head what they are. Um, and, and they look at those and they look at which ones they think they can move the fastest to get toward completion. So um, depending on what the project is and the scope of the project, the, that kind of, they kind of put it into, into where they would think they'd ought to be. But then the decision is kind of made by the town manager and myself as which one we're gonna go for, for next as far as the projects go. So to get something on the queue, would it be, um, is there a process to advocate with TAC to get a project in the queue or is it um, public comment or writing letters or how, do, how would one get a project on the queue with the TAC? Um, if, you, if you send a letter to the town manager or the TAC or me, they, they get in there and they get looked at. Okay. Um, that's how it goes. Some, some projects move forward faster because they end up in special areas of town which get more attention, which you know, have community development block grant money, or they might be an area of town that uh, special funding is available. Those can actually move faster sometimes. Um, otherwise, some projects move at the same pace. Thank you. Mandy. 
Yeah. Um, we've, you know, the manager submits this a CIP to us that is almost balanced, but that means there's probably things that are not listed on here that you might have wanted. So I'm curious if there's anything from the department that is not listed in the five year plan or in the future projects area that you think we should know about. War Memorial. <laughs> so that there, there always is. Um, <laughs> One of the things that we kind of pushed back is the equipment for the field maintenance program. We've moved that a year back. Um, that's something we kind of wanted to do this year because we kind of, it kind of came to the forefront last year, um, but it's been moved back a year. War Memorial Pool, we, we've got to do something. We got to make some decisions about War Memorial Pool House, not the pool, but the house. Um, it takes more time to open that pool house every year. And it's just a, it's just a labor sink. Um, it, it just, the, the building is, it's beyond its useful life. A cinder block building, the squirrels love it. They live up in the top floor. Um, we gotta get the squirrels out every year. We gotta fix the squirrel damage. Um, the mold and mildew has to be taken off. It's just, it's just a building that just needs to go away. Um, and it does go away in the bigger project for community field that does go away. Um, we need to start thinking about planning and funding the engineering and architect work to actually start designing what's going to replace it. Um, we know it's going to be a multi-year process. We just need to start. Um, War Memorial Pool is also going to need the liner replaced. The liner is a, has a 10-year life, life to it. Um, we're coming up, I think next year is year nine. So we'll be asking in the fall outgoing years for a new liner for that pool. Um, there's a, there's, there's a, a lot of other things. We, we could always spend more money on paving. We could always spend more money on sidewalks. Um, we could relamp the whole town if people wanted to go to a lower wattage lamp. We do have, I mean, we, we did the LED conversion back when there was really only one type of LED light that was reliable. And it's been over 15 years now, I think, almost 15 years. And there's newer versions of lights. There's Smart lights, if we wanted to go with smart lights that, you know, when it gets to be 12 o'clock, it dims itself. And if it senses a presence in the, in, in, around the light, after it dims itself, it can brighten itself and then dim itself again. Um, those are things that, you know, start thinking about is, um, although the lights, the lights don't need a wholesale replacement because they're not beyond their useful life. It's just the fact that there's new technology that might make lighting better for people and um, people may enjoy a better, atmosphere. Anna. Feel free to you suggesting townwide mood lighting. Is that what's happening? Um, Sean, I'll, I'll try to connect with you about the resident request because that was, we did that, they did that and then it came back. So um, I think it's getting a little spirally. So happy okay. to talk with you more about it because I'm confused on where to go with where to tell them to go. So not a question, did just a follow up on that. So um, I'm looking to see, I, I just, I have one connected with the sidewalk studies. Um, you, uh, East Pleasant and the others, whatever else you have on the list that would be a potential new sidewalk. How do you then um, go from, we've got the study to thinking about getting the sidewalk in? And, and is there a pipeline at the state level if, the town makes a case for safety, for um, outdoor healthy movement. For example, during COVID, people on East Pleasant, families and children have been walking down the road in the road at 40 miles an hour because they decide to go out and get exercise on it. So is there a, a way of moving from, we have the study, we know where it might go to, at one point you cited us the numbers of putting in a new sidewalk and it doesn't look like it's in the budget for the next several years. So, so my question is what, what happens after the study? So actually, it, we, we're actually not studying it. We're, we're actually doing a so physical meant, survey. Yeah, I meant, sir, I, I used the wrong word. I meant survey yeah, to where, where, yeah. It would, where it would go, right? Yeah. We, yeah, we need to survey to find the property pens and find the best way to lay out the sidewalk. Um, and what, if we need to take property to identify places we need to take property. 
Um, so what we normally do is after we do the survey, we'll design it. And then once we design it, then we'll start we we'll either ask for an appropriation to do the whole thing, we'll look for grants to do the whole thing, um, or we'll start piecemealing sections of it together and start building a section that looks like a, a natural section, like to finish from Olympia Drive all the way to Eastman Lane. That would be a good section to do. That would connect some sidewalks and make a connection um, to go from uh, Eastman Lane to the next neighborhood or the next neighborhood, we would start looking at how we can break it up if we don't get money. And then we would take, if we had to break it up, we'd take it from the, some, of the, some of that money from the sidewalk funds that we have every year. Um, we, we have before the town council, we submitted the um, North Pleasant Street sidewalk improvements we wanna do. Um, we wanna, those are existing sidewalks, but we wanna make one side wider we want to move some crosswalks around. We want to do a bunch of things on. And uh, once that's approved, we'll start moving some of those sidewalk pieces into either asking for money for it or asking for or using the existing money we have to kind of piece it together and work it down the street. And for, uh, and for a North Pleasant, where it goes past uh, UMass dorms and up past lots of apartment buildings, do we approach UMass and say, this is gonna be benefiting your students and get them to share in the costs? Uh, that's beyond my pay level. Okay. Yeah, so I think, but Kathy, I think we do try to have those conversations with UMass around infrastructure okay. projects that have joint benefits. Yeah. Right, okay. I don't see any other questions. So um, I think we, we thank you, Guilford, and are we getting you out in time? I think so. Yes, you are. It's fine. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Gilford. Thank you. So next up is the fire department and Chief Nelson uh, with Assistant Chiefs Olmstead and Stromgren are here to talk about those projects. Um, Chief Nelson, would you like me to put up the summary, share the summary that um, you guys sent over of all your sure. projects? Yeah, okay. uh, that'll work. Take me a second. All right, we have all the time in the world. Sorry, almost there. All right, here it is. Do you, you ever have have your uh, spouse call you in the, in the middle of, of a meeting and you try to try and tell them, tell them that uh, you're bu you're busy and they won't and they just keep on talking? <laughs> doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> I always answer the phone and I have a conversation with her. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, would, you, would you like would you like me to go go through each each one or just go one? Yeah. One, why don't you one, start one, with one at a time or? Yeah. Why don't you start with? Um, we'll, we'll just go through, and and we're we're gonna uh, actually we're gonna split 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 this up and up up between the three the three three of us. Uh, but we'll start start with the truck the truck guy. Uh, this is some 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 something that's been on our radar 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 for quite 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 some some time. It's in dire need of. Uh, Placement. One of the, one of the things is uh, it's it, it's a thirty four year old truck. It's the old, 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 oldest truck in service in, in the in the state, and it's at at the it's for at least the last five or six six years. It's been at a point where you cannot get parts for it. Uh, they have to actually assistant chief strong 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 and they can give us more exact exact times on that. But we can't get get parts parts for it. It the they have, they have to fab, 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 fabricate parts. We had had it out for, uh, I believe, five, five, five months last, last year while parts were being 
have, 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 have advocated. And we just found out to, to, to today that it's going to be out uh, for it's going to be out, out for another four months because we we have to get a part part fab 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 it's, it's at the point where it's, it, this is it's pretty much an un, untenable tenable condition for, for for us in terms in terms of 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 the uses we need need it for. So, uh, Linz, do you want to jump in, jump in there? Sure. Um, I just want to step back one second just to um, sort of reiterate something that um, Guilford said and Mr. Rhodes about both the uh, time and cost increases for things. Obviously, that's affecting us also for vehicles. Um, you know, in terms of timing, you'll see later down in the narrative on this truck, it's a 500 day build time, so about 16 months. So, um, you know, that raises concern with us that this was approved July 1st. We're still not seeing the vehicle till fall of 23. So that effectively means we have to keep the existing truck in service another year and a half, which, uh, you know, again, based on what the chief just said, um, is a challenge. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Cost wise, um, we're seeing similar cost increases. We're a little bit more stabilized because as it notes here, all of our vehicles we buy off of what's called the FCAM Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts uh, MAPC bid program. And they can only increase the prices so much each year. So the prices we have here right now are the current price and they certainly can and will go up over the next uh, six months but they can only go up so much because already in this state bid process and we would be buying the truck off of that bid. So um, the longer we wait, the more the price gets. This truck, when we started proposing it five years ago, was about 1.1 million. And every year it's gone up by 0.1 million. So now we're up to 1.5. Um, but uh, that's a relatively known number right now, at least for the next few months. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, as the chief said, this is a 1988 truck. Um, it's outlived its useful life. NFPA standard is 20 to 25 years for a truck like this, so we're almost 10 years beyond the national standard. Um, you know, you look at a city like Northampton, they're about to buy their third, their, they only have one ladder truck, but it's the third truck they will have had in the time we've had this one. So they had one, they bought a new one, it's about 17 years old, and now they're replacing it again. Um, you know, and just to give you some perspective, about a quarter to a third of our full-time firefighters are younger than this truck. And that doesn't go unnoticed um, when we take them out training on it. Bottom line is it's outlived its useful life. It was out of service for six and a half months last year. We spent about $30,000 to fix it, to use it for those five months. Um, when I wrote this narrative, uh, it was out for repairs. We thought it would be back in March. They just called us. I just told the chief this two hours ago. Um, that one part they need is not available for four months. So we won't see that truck back until June. So it's effectively not even available to us half the year and we're pouring a lot of money into it. Um, so it's, it's really come time to replace this truck. And in our narrative there, you know, I, we've explained, um, you know, what it does, what its role is. Um, and it really comes down to just its age and the parts availability is why it's really time to replace it at this point. Um, I don't know if you want to do questions item by item or wait till we go through them all. Sean, whatever you'd rather do. Uh, what, unless if somebody raises their hand, we can stop, but why yeah. don't we go through okay. them and then we'll do okay. it at the end. Sure. Next, next, next up. Uh, we, we, when I originally, originally when I, when I, when I first came, came here, we were on a 10, 10, 10 year size cycle before placing uh, the AM, AM and as time has gone on, gone, gone on, uh, because because of, because of our in, our in, our increasing uh, activity, uh, that we 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 proposed a few times to reduce 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 that uh, replay, replay, replacement time because we're re, re, reaching an end of life for it for uh, our ambulances quicker. quicker. So, uh, so, so this, this is this, this would re replace one that's uh, 10, 10 year, years old. It's our um, number five, our A, our A, a our A five, our last name. Uh, and 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 one of one of the 
benefits of this is that it's it's it, it would be on a on a on a state state bid. It also also as as our our the label latest one one for for purposes has a, a hybrid zero R R R R R P M to system that that uh, that will shut shut down the the engine and run run the uh, accessories off off the battery while 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 we're I, I, I don't, when and when when it stops stops I, 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 I don't have at a scene and as as I said currently currently it was you you can see it's ten ten year, years years old has one hundred and fifty five mile, miles on it and those are for pretty hard miles because as you know from 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 Am Amherst. It's 10, 10 miles to, to, to the, 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 the hospital, the center, the center of town. But we all, we all also serve shoot, 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 shoots very well, level, level in town, which of course is going to add more time and model. So, uh, you want to jump in? Um, yeah, this or, ambulance or, is essentially would be a, tw a, a twin to the one we bought in. It was FI uh, 20 emergency procurement because our 2011 ambulance died. Um, we just took delivery of it this fall. Um, so that that new ambulance we just got a couple months ago is our first um, foray, if you will, into the hybrid zero RPM system, which is a version of a hybrid. So this, um, I should have mentioned that the ladder truck we're proposing would have that same system in it. The uh, pumper fire engine that's on order right now with FY 22 funds uh, will also be a hybrid. So essentially all of the vehicles we're ordering now, we're putting this, uh, what they call is an idle mitigation system. So it's not like a Prius that's shutting down the engine when you're driving down the road or at a stoplight, it's shutting down the engine as soon as you park it on a scene um, and running off of the batteries um, until it needs to restart due to low battery, needing air conditioning, heat, et cetera. Um, so the, and the ambulances are where you really see the shortest turnaround in your investment on that. Uh, based on our usage, they're saying that uh, the zero RPM pays for itself. It's about a twenty-five thousand upcharge um, in about four to five years. So we're going to track that closely to see how that plays out. Something like the ladder truck, it would take much longer to pay for itself, but we also run the truck twice or sometimes three times as long as an ambulance. So, um, so this ambulance will be a twin to the one we just bought, um, and right now. Uh, I think I mentioned the ladder truck was a 500 day, so a 16 month build time. The ambulances are about a 400 day build time right now. So it'd be a little over a year before we would see this if we ordered it. This is keeping with our 10 year replacement cycle, which we've been doing for about 20 years. Uh, pre pandemic, we are trying to up that a little bit to make it about an eight year replacement cycle for each of our five ambulances um, because they are getting beat up. Um, but we did not buy one in FY22. So currently we're still in the 10 year replacement cycle with this purchase. So this is part of our normal buy an ambulance every two years cycle that we've been following for about 20 years. And I'll just add to that, that right now this project's being proposed uh, to be funded with a borrowing. Um, we sometimes buy ambulances out of the ambulance fund, which collects the money um, uh, when the ambulance goes out and they transport somebody, they, they get billed. And so that money goes into an ambulance fund um, which supports the department and and sometimes supports equipment like this. Um, so by the time the capital plan is finalized, if there are sufficient funds in that ambulance fund, this might get switched to being purchased out of that ambulance fund. Um, it won't positively impact FY23 resources, but it would make the out years look a little better um, because there wouldn't be a, a debt payment for this for this vehicle. Next, next up, uh, supervisor of the vehicle, we've got uh, our assistant chief for EMS and prevention, his car, uh, which is my old car. Uh, it presently has, uh, has uh, how, how, how many miles, Jeff, do you have, have on your, yours now? Uh, we're up to 181,000, almost 182. We just yeah. uh, did a new water pump for 3,600, $3,100. And I think we did $3,600 of spending on it on the repair back in the early fall. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's used every, 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 every day. Uh, and it, and the other piece is it's, it's a uh, response. So, and as, as it said, as we say, say, say here, we're going to get, get rid of, rid of an, old, an old, older car. 
uh, just just get 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 rid rid of that. And this and this and his old vehicle would uh, become one 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 of our staff cars, stays 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 station cars that's used by by the captains to do inspections and that that type type, type of thing. It wouldn't be used as as much as as as, as it is is now. Get as much wear 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 there as it is right right now. One of the good good things is that we can uh, the next V vehicle can be would uh, be be a high hybrid uh, as some sim similar, similar to what the cars uh, buying and of, and of course it comes from state state bid bids as well. Uh, coming up next, uh, protective Lindsay, do you want to talk, to, talk about about the protective gear? Sure. Um, protective gear. Um, most of you, I don't think have been on the capital committee pre year a few years ago this is another one of the uh, recurring items we try to put this in every year uh forty thousand dollars to replace the protective gear protective gear is basically referring to what you see there in the picture it's the ensemble that the firefighters wear the pants the coat the helmets the boots it's it's everything that protects them going into a fire except for the breathing apparatus um with about 45 full-time members and our call force and our student force, we have to outfit just under 100 peep firefighters. Um, and our uh, full-time people really need two sets because um, if they get their gear dirty or wet, it really needs to be swapped out. Um, you can't go into the next fire with wet gear. It needs to be a dry gear. So we have over 100 sets of gear we need to keep active. The NFPA standard is 10 years, regardless of its condition. All I can tell you by 10 years, they're pretty uh, worn and need to be replaced anyways. So this 40,000 enables us to replace anywhere from 10 to 15 sets a year. Um, that typically goes to the new full-time firefighters and then it gets a hand-me-down situation to our newer call and student firefighters. Occasionally they get new gear. So this is a recurring charge to try to keep all our sets of gear under that 10 year maximum. Um, and in fact, the fire academy won't allow us to send anybody for classes. If their gear is over 10 years old, they do check it. So this is, a, like I said, a recurring amount of money and that's what it's for every year is to keep the cycle going for replacement. One of the, one of the things uh, about about this um, amount, amount like that asked to us, that's what we've asked, asked to that same amount for the last, six six years or so I think at least think. yeah and we've kind of stayed stayed at that at that level 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 because we don't uh, there there are years where 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 uh, we don't spend 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 it all I mean, that uh give, given the age and uh, use and all, all all that over your time the amount that, that we spent spent on protective gear does fluctuate we found found that this is a uh, a good a good a good a good a good, a good, a good amount 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 you know, amount to put 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 to that because it gen generally means we're able to replace the amount of such uh, a gear that we need need to in any given year. I, I would just add to that that um, uh, some years like you know twenty I think it's FY twenty maybe FY twenty one. You know, because of the situation, we did not get that lump sum of money. So we actually then fell a little bit behind. So right now we're trying to make it up again. And I would also add, just like the vehicles, it's about a nine month delivery time right now for this gear. It's crazy. We used to be able to get it in a couple of months. And we have new firefighters that actually started last summer, full time people. Um, we fit them and ordered the gear end of September. We still don't have their new gear. They're using hand me down stuff. So right now it's about nine to ten months. They're telling us to get new gear. I'm going to let uh, Susan Chief on on said talk, talk talk about our ambulance lab laptops. So our laptops uh, go on every ambulance, the five ambulances, as well as the uh, two frontline engines that we use as paramedic level uh, emergency uh, response uh, vehicles. They give us the ability to do all of our patient reporting. So any patient contact we have, uh, we type in the uh, patient information into the software that's embedded on the, uh, the laptops. And they're, they're, they're our most crucial element for data collection and for billing. We got behind uh, because a couple of years ago for uh, uh, purchasing and keep up with our 
replacements every two years. Um, and so this 15,000 is to go on top of what we did last year to try to get um, back and replace the ones that are, that are basically uh, breaking down as we, as we go. Um, supply chain issues are a problem for us as well. We, we ordered two laptops probably early August and we didn't receive those until a couple of weeks ago. We thought we would get them in November. Those were an attempt to try to use a slightly cheaper version of what we were had been using previously to see if we could sort of extend ourselves. Um, so we just got those in service and we're trying them out. And before I buy the next two with, the, with last year's uh, leftover money, um, they look like they're going to work out. And then we will go after probably at least four more using this $15,000 after July 1st. And that hopefully would get us all those vehicles, seven vehicles and one spare, because unfortunately when they start breaking down, they often can't be fixed. Um, so if they do that, we need to have a replacement available to, uh, to let that repair happen with IT. So the last project that's not on here, um, and maybe Jeff, you could speak to it a little bit. Um, there's a project for defibrillators or life packs. These were, uh, this is a piece of equipment that broke um, or that we were unable to get repairs and replace. Um, I think it was last year. So we did an emergency yeah. replacement of them during the year. And we did a three-year lease to replace them because we had limited, uh, we didn't have any existing funds. So we were able to find the funds within the operating budget to take the first year of that lease. Um, but the second year and the third year, the plan was to come back to capital and ask for those funds. Um, and so Jeff, do you just want to speak to a little bit about the, the life packs and the LP 15s yeah. and what they do? So the cardiac monitors, they're, they're a mix of, of uh, a number of, of features. There are cardiac monitors, so we can monitor your heart rate. We can do um, hospital level EKGs to look and see if you're having a heart attack. They take care of monitoring vitals, uh, everything from your blood pressure to your heart rate, to your oxygen level in your blood, to the amount of CO2 in your exhaled air, uh, especially for folks that are having difficulty breathing. Um, they're really what makes the one tool in the ambulance that really allows us to have a paramedic level of service because of all the types of uh, diagnostic tools that are attached to that. Um, unfortunately, that makes them a fairly expensive proposition. Um, and what happened in, with our previous version, which it was coming closer to its end of life anyway, um, is that the motherboards in those actually had lead. And the FDA came out and said, we're not gonna allow anybody to change out those motherboards if they fail um, or technicians to touch them anymore. And we were probably year eight of year 10 when they put this out. Um, so what this said was that if it fails or breaks, you're gonna to have to replace them. You cannot fix them. And inevitably within a short time after that, the first uh, machine actually broke down on a call. Um, it had to be replaced by another monitor and took an ambulance out of service to accomplish it. And uh, thanks to uh, Sean's help to sort of figure out the, the how, uh, we figured out in working with the uh, Stryker company to do the replacement. And they knew they had some, some skin in the game and they actually made us a really good deal as far as the trading that we got and the cost. We probably bought those five machines for half of what we would buy them on the regular market format. So it actually worked out really well. Uh, for us, we were going ahead to per have to purchase these things anyways, probably in the next year or so. Questions? Yeah, we'll entertain questions. Anna. So the last ambulance that y'all got had the anti addling technology and you were able to get a grant uh, with, you, with Stephanie Chicarella from Dewar. Any chance that'll happen again or no? Um, I can answer half of that. The um, pumper that we now have on order with the uh, FY22 funds, which the council also you know, had to add some money to a few weeks ago. Um, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. The anti-idling for that is being paid off of a grant also, but we haven't addressed that question for the next uh, vehicle, the ladder truck or the ambulance, I don't believe. Yeah, a little, so right now that money's included in the money we're asking for in capital. So. Yeah, a little, um, so the only difference, uh, so with the ambulance, we did get a grant, I think it was actually a green communities 
grant yeah. or came through them with the ladder truck. Um, we approved a, a separate pot of money for sustainability last year as part of the capital plan. So we pulled the it from that pot. Truck, but, yeah, for the yeah. pumper truck. Yeah. So we, so we pulled that from, it was still capital money. Um, so I think for the, this ambulance, um, we would look, we could, we concern, we will work with Stephanie to see what other grants are available. I think Stephanie is always willing to, um, to apply for those grants when they're available. Great. So other than staff time, there's nothing stopping us from, from doing, I know staff time is significant, but other no, than that, there's nothing yeah. stopping us from, from pursuing that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perf. Tim Nelson. Hello. I'm sitting hey. a long time. How are you doing? Uh, How you I'm doing? doing well. All uh, right. Uh, where I'm staying currently is uh, I am a block and a half from a fire department. Okay. And every morning when I'm finishing up my walk, I walk past it. So the other day they uh, were pulling out the trucks and I got a chance to talk with them. They have just completed their cycle of replacing trucks. Their last one was uh, replaced last year at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pricing differentials between last year and this year, if they were gonna be doing it, is extraordinary. Again, yeah. because of supply chain issues. But the other thing that was of note to me is how proud they were of the equipment and the confidence that they gave them in terms of doing their job the way they were supposed to be doing it. Um, you know, people don't really realize that people have to work with equipment day in and day out, especially in emergency kinds of situations or sure. stressful situations, how really important it is to be confident about that particular equipment especially that if you're racing down the road in a you know, 20, 50 ton truck. So um, I really appreciated that. And I really have a new appreciation for not only their job, but also for the cost, the capital cost that goes into replacing a truck and the planning that needs to go into that. So when I see what the fire department is doing here, I'm really grateful for it and I appreciate it. And I thank uh, all of you uh, for your service. Well, thanks. I'll pass. I'll pass. Pass that, that, that along. I mean, we we have good equipment. We we make sure that we get good good equipment. But the main thing is is that we've got really good 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 people, good smart people, dedicated, capable people. You can have the great the great greatest equipment in in, in the world, but if you don't have the the people, people who know how to use it and you use it well, then then it's then they're, they're then it's just just one fun fun too expensive 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 toys. But we've got really good, really good, really smart 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 folks that, that get the most out 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 of the equipment that we provide by them. Thank you, um, Mandy. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm glad and happy to see that the uh, ladder truck is on this one. I know you guys have been asking for it for a while, and so I'm glad we're finding a way to do that. Um, but my question is sort of the same that I think you heard me ask of um, the superintendent of DPW, which is, um, you know, this is a five-year plan. It tries to be balanced, which means inevitably there are things probably missing from it that you would really like to see on it. Um, are there are there things that we don't see on this plan that um, you would like us to know about, to think about, and maybe ask the manager about on things like that in terms of capital? Well, you know what? Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, well, when 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 Lindsay is the key. Other record where that where that comes comes well. Yeah, I mean, it's there's always things we could improve upon equipment. I would what I would say is you know when you look at the five year plan, you'll see things like I don't have it right in front of you. If you look at next year or FY twenty five, um, you know there's things like radios somewhere in there, yeah. thermal imagers. Uh, there's an ATV in there ATV. somewhere. Yeah. Those are all things that honestly we've been pushing down the track for a few years now. You know they were in FY. 20 at one time, some of them like the ATV, the radios we did have an FY23 for this year, um, but we've pushed them out because we, you know, we can wait a little bit longer for them. 
and things like the ladder truck and the turnout gear are bigger priorities in the ambulance. So you're, you're kind of seeing them. A lot of the things you see coming up in the next couple of years are things that really would have been this year. But to be realistic, uh, we've pushed them out. I did want to make a note that one thing you're also not seeing, you know, one thing we had kind of complained about for years and now it's been improved upon. So it's this is kind of a shout out. I like the way it's going is things like repairs to the fire station. You've seen already in Jeremiah's uh, capital budget request. So that, like this year, there's um, the facade, the, the siding of the station, which looks horrible up here at the North Station and to build out the sprinkler system. Up until just a few years ago, those were all going in our capital budget. And then inevitably, JCPC would say, oh, so what are your priorities? And it's really hard for us to prioritize. Do we buy turnout protective gear for a firefighter or an ambulance, or do we fix the facade on the station? I mean, actually, it's not hard. The answer is we buy the gear for the firefighter. But we didn't like that's That doesn't seem right to us. And Jeremiah took note of that when he started here. And it's actually working much better now. He's working to take care of the town's infrastructure in terms of buildings. He's championing uh, causes like that and projects. So he's dealing with that part of it. And we can deal with the fire specific stuff. So you're also not seeing some of those products, Mandy, because they're over in his, you know, his budget now. Because there are a lot of building issues to address. I won't even get going on Central Station right now. Yeah. And I think. One of the big, big points is that uh, what what you don't don't see is how many thing how many times we we've, we've it's essentially kicked a can down 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 the road on certain certain things. Uh, the the vehicle for assistant chief uh, uh, owns that that should have been gone three 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 years 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 ago. We're pouring more money money in to it because it's getting run run into the ground because it's being it it's it's old and it's being used used, used a lot we ran in, into that with an, an ambulance last year that last year right where we play, 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 place an engine because we didn't we, we didn't keep keep with it with our replay player replay, replacement plan so we had had a front front line ambulance that was that was on the front line for too long and took too 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 much wear 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 and tear. It wasn't rotated back. So those are the things that you don't you don't see things that we we uh, de, de, de deferred and warned about and said, hey, you know, this is going to come back to haunt us. And at times it it, it has. Chief, if I could, um, yeah. I'm going to kind of jump on that side of the ambulance. So if you look at that that list, that still maintains the kind of every other year, 10-year format that we've had, um, basically since I pretty much got here in 1994. Um, to help us get into that eight-year format, it would mean something like moving the ambulances up a year where you'd have a sequence of this year, next year, buy an ambulance, a year off, and then another sequencing in order to sort of make the whole fleet get in the whole five ambulance fleet get into an eight year cycle. Um, it would take, cause they kind of offset, they don't fit a perfectly nice uh, FY cycle as easily. And also just remember that supply chain issue affects the ambulances too, because the ambulance we might buy in July won't show up probably till the following end of the following summer by the way it looks. Uh, thank you. Um, I see Anna has her hand up again, and then I, I have a question, but not on this topic. You go. I think it's a quick one. Um, there are not any infrastructure implications in terms of buildings with these new vehicles, are there? I know they're hybrid, they're not electric, so you're not trying to plug them in, but uh, seems like a silly question. Is that ladder truck going to fit in the North Station? Um, it I've will. Well, okay. well it, it actually, it will, and that's one of, one of the things we, uh, one of the Part, parts parts that's good about replacing replay, 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 replay the doors as part of that pro, pro, project they're gonna do do some uh, they're gonna clear 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 out an area area that will allow a larger truck truck to fit in the, if nothing uh, nothing necessary. and we're do 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 doing it now as opposed to say we we end up with a truck that, that we want that that's a larger uh, than than the one one we have, we won't have, have to go back in and re configure it. That's an issue we have with the sense sense and 
central station station because of the size of the doors we can't get and and the size of the foot, footprint of the have that is four we generally cannot get the truck we want the truck we need all right we have we have to make it make we have to kind of kind of give give some 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 something up you know because it has to fit through the door it has to fit on the floor and that's it's it's a, a, a little tough like uh the one we the one we're ordering now we went geez we went with a short short shorter chat chat chassis no long longer chat long, longer chat chassis but that's that's going to take away from some since some of our stores thank you because of the size of the yeah. thanks Herb. Uh, I would just like to, there are two things. One uh, in relation uh, is to you, Tim. I have not found a way to uh, deal with a spousal interruption when we're <laughs> If you ever find out a way to do that, please pass it on. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second is that uh, I just want to say again, and for all of us on the, on this committee, is that uh, we are in uh, incredibly difficult times and that will hang over us for the next couple of years or three or four years in relationship to procurement. And the price fluctuations are going to be uh, unknown, but we will know that they will fluctuate and they definitely will not be going down. Thank you. Irv, um, I, I just have one question, not about the purchases. And uh, uh, as you can hear, we're all proud of our fire department and our ambulance department. Um, we're, we're grateful for the work you do. I'm wondering with the computers and the laptops, do they track, you said they track data. Does that give you an easy way of seeing not just how many calls you have, but how many calls were for a student going to the hospital or down at Applewood or the Arbors, picking someone off the floor and putting them on their feet um, that didn't result in the hospital. Does it, it, does it give you a tracking advice in addition to a billing device or do you have to do that in another system? We can kind of do that in both. It requires, there is at least in, in the, uh, the software that came with this, the ability to do some uh, reports that we didn't have access to in our previous uh, EPCR, our patient reporting system. Um, so date of birth is, you know, age is a great way to, to kind of do that. And then address location can be the other. Um, if you have a specific location and say, you know, I'll pick on Applewood, for example, one Spencer Drive makes it really easy to pick out a, you know, a location and say, you know, how many times do we go there? How many times do we go to the Arbors? How many times do we go to Center for Extended Care? Um, and you know, also understand it looks like we're probably building another assisted living type format down at the green leaves. So, you know, we'll, we'll be tracking all those things to see what the impact is. Um, but we can do the same thing using, um, using that, those functions for uh, date of birth. And we do do some college based ones. And I've done those in the past to get a feel for how billing goes in that demographic. And I'm mainly asking not for the purpose of the capital fund, but if we went, really wanted to say, let's get a, um, an update on the calls and where they're coming from times of day, that, like the things you've given us before, I was thinking mm -hmm. that the computers might give you a way that was less labor intensive because they, some of it is built into them as long as you can protect the privacy of the people. Um, you know, so, so that's where my question was coming from. I didn't need a, a long... A Sorry, definitive answer on this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know we have other ways of doing that too. And we've used uh, dispatching software to help us, you know, as well, um, sort of on both sides. So if you're looking for time of day and uh, of all of our calls, we we'll often do that in the uh, the IMC dispatching side of that yeah. that search function. Yeah, and, then, and in terms of being labor intensive, I mean, that's, I guess that's a row, row, okay. row with the term. I mean, the, the dad data is there. We 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 know uh, we know where 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 it is. We know how to get get it, you know. And we've we've been doing we've been doing that for, for a while. As I said, we've we've got some pretty smart 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 people people here, and I've got got some folks that 
here that uh, that that do that that type. type, type okay. They do the do do it well. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other any other questions comments. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, let's hope the supply chain delivers some of the Euro vehicles uh, before we meet again, a year from now. <laughs> yeah, we, we can hope. Yeah. <laughs> we can hope. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Nelson. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, all of you. Bye. All right. So the last uh, department tonight is the library. And library director Sharon Sherry is here. Um, Sharon, do you want me to bring Cindy in as well? Yeah, Cindy and George. Both of them, okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I thought, so I'll just give a, a quick, just a really brief uh, telling you a few words about what we're asking for this year. And then, and then George and Cindy will really be there to answer your questions that you have. Um, here comes George. So um, uh, the, our first request is we're asking for $24,000 to purchase some shelving for our special collections uh, materials. Uh, our building project, unfortunately, uh, is about a year plus behind. Um, and we just can't wait to remove this collection from where it's located right now. Um, the room that it's in is just not safe. Uh, the roof is leaking and and located above the archive is uh, an HVAC system that is leaking. Um, yeah, so our plan is to install the shelving in what is now the exhibit room, and then we'll move all of those irreplaceable items into uh, onto that, that shelving. Um, on the plus side, we will be able to use the shelving during the interim, uh, you know, the two year during construction, as well as in the in the final resting place, you know, once we um, once the project is done. So that is the special. How would you like me to do this? Do you want to start with? Do you want to take it on a case by case basis, or do you want me to say everything and then? I think since you just have the two projects, so maybe just um, do the last one, and then okay. if people want to add to it. Sounds good. So the second uh, request is for $46,200, which includes it's $45,000 for an electric van and $1,200 for a charging station. Um, we have been without our van for several weeks this year, this fiscal year. Um, it, it's been in the shop for repairs. We finally just got it back early this week, I think it was. Um, we have exhausted our vehicle maintenance budget. We're, we're worried about whether or not it is going to pass inspection. It's got some serious rust issues. Um, it, you know, it's 16 years old, high mileage, and it doesn't owe us a thing. It's been a really great vehicle, um, but we are we're we're looking forward to um, you know moving on to an electric vehicle. I think that will be really great. Our facility staff. The reason we have a van, um, we use it to deliver books, you know, interlibrary loan items between between the three buildings, um, tools, supplies, that kind of a thing. Um, we also use it like to go to Home Depot or when we have to bring our special collections to um, uh, spaces to be restored or. Um, uh, you know, for uh, evaluated for insurance purposes, that kind of a thing. So um, right now, what we've been doing is our our facility staff, they're using their own vehicles, which is, you know, they do get mileage reimbursement, but that's not, it's not the same thing. So those are our two requests for this year. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. So do, do George or Cindy, do you, either of you have anything to add? Otherwise, we'll open it up for questions. George? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just, uh, I actually have three parts that I can talk about. Um, I wanna talk about the current van that we have, uh, what our goal is and what the reality of the auto industry is, which I've learned a lot about in the past few months. Um, so Sharon has told you pretty much what we use our van for. Um, it's pretty much anything that we need off of our property, the van gets used for. It could be picking up a donation from a patron it could be, like Sharon said, bringing something from special collections to be restored. 
Uh, it's taken several trips to other libraries outside the region. Uh, but the bulk of the mileage is doing the branch deliveries every day, seven days a week. Um, it's a 2006 4350. It currently has 76,000 miles on it, which isn't bad for a 16 year old vehicle, but it's all city miles and we all know what city miles does to a vehicle. Um, this past year, we've spent about $4,000 doing repairs. Some of it is wear and tear like brakes and things like that, but a lot of it has been age. Uh, you know, rotted fuel lines, rotted brake lines. Uh, we've had it towed three times this year, uh, just from breakdowns. Um, so yeah, it's just, and we've done some body work on it. We did some body work on it to get it to pass inspection last year, but I'm not convinced it will pass inspection this year. It might, but the rot is in places like around the door casings and things like that around the back uh, cargo area. So moisture's getting in, um, fumes are getting in, things like that. I'm not sure whether or not it'll pass. I'd like to think it would, but if it doesn't, we have to look at whether or not we're going to try to fix it to pass inspection or do something short-term until we can get a replacement van. So the goal is that we definitely want to go with an electric van because now they make electric vans that are big enough that can handle what we needed to do on a day-to-day -day basis. We really do need a one-ton van because of the weight of the books and just the size of the things that we typically have to haul, like leaves to the transfer station or just dozens and dozens of crates of books, things like that. So it does need to be a full-size van. Uh, right now, the only electric van that's available on the market is the new 40 Transit. Uh, Amazon has electric vans and other companies have electric vans, but they're only selling them to corporations. They're not selling them to municipalities or, or out to the general public yet. Uh, so with going with that, that's where we came with that initial dollar figure. Now, I got that dollar figure in December. And of course, since then, the audio industry has not recovered yet. Um, I've talked to three different vendors that are on the state bid list, and they've all basically told me, that the manufacturer has stopped taking government orders for two months. Uh, they said they probably will not be able to take any orders until 2020 for the 2023 model year. Um, and they also said that because of the chip shortage, because of the backlog, that we can expect the pricing to increase possibly 20%, which is substantial when you're talking about a $45,000 vehicle. So, planning that ahead, I don't really know what to ask for, for money, because I would like to think that the initial cost that we came up with will be enough, but we can't predict what is gonna happen come July 1 into the next fiscal year, where the industry is gonna be at, what's gonna be available at that time. Um, I'm also looking into possibly leasing a vehicle for a year, just to get us through the interim until the market starts to recover but I do not have those figures with me today. I will have them next week because I'm meeting with somebody to talk about it. So that's my spiel. Do, do people want to focus on the van, the van first and then ask and then hear from Cindy or do we want to hear from Cindy first and then do both of them? No, no comments. Well, Cindy, why don't you go and then and then we'll ask, then we'll figure out where we have questions. Um, yeah, so thank you. We've had um, several leaks in the um, in the special collection storage room um, over the last few years and it is getting uh, worse and worse. Um, so now everything is covered in tarps um, and then our roof uh, started leaking into special collections. So now the reading room has um, tarps in it as well. Um, and I know that um, the biggest question um, that I've gotten is about these future leaks. It, every time a new leak happens is why you put the stuff back um, where you know it's gonna leak. And it's because I don't have any other place to put it, um, which is, um, why I think this is such a, an important um, project to really move forward on. Um, the uh, exhibit room can be um, taken down uh, in terms of the 
um, exhibits fairly quickly. Um, and it wouldn't be too much of a loss given the, the interim um, period um, in terms of people not being able to see the exhibits. Um, every time there's a, a thaw, um, I get worried because that's usually when there's um, some sort of leak happening. And then um, with the, the changeover um, from heat to AC and then AC to heat, um, there is always some sort of um, problem happening. Um, and so there's there's been water damage to the collections. Um, and so far we haven't um, lost anything, but um, there's definitely um, dozens of books now that that have irreparable um, damage to them so um, I think it's it's a time sensitive uh, project questions comments Anna I was just I was gonna uh, you know, alleviate Mandy's stress of, of going first again. So um, first question is about the van. Super excited that you're going electric. Question is, feels obvious, but is the charging station going to still be viable post renovation? And expand. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. In fact, when the project gets into design development, uh, because I'm on the building committee, I'm going to make sure that that is a part of the expansion project. And if it's in place before the project starts, that we'll be able to repurpose it and use it in the new location. Move it. Okay. Second question uh, is for Cindy and Sharon about the shelving. So CPA allocated a, a decent chunk of change to y'all for the special collections for fiscal year 22. Um, I'm curious if this, this is admittedly a smaller portion, right? But um, is that able to, you said you can use it in the new facility. Does that alleviate at all the ask from those CPA dollars or no? I think that's an awesome question. I have no idea. I would ask you guys, Sonia, do you know? And I apologize, Sonia, while you're thinking, I did pull up the application, but I did not have time to look through it fully to see if she yeah. I mean, we can pull it up. My understanding is the CPA request was not for things like shelving, but I could be wrong. I thought it was more for the room itself. Um, but we yeah, can I can up. get back to the committee um, tomorrow when I have a chance to look at it. I think you're right, Sean. I just wanted to make sure I asked it. Yeah, yeah no, it's a good question. We can get the answer to that. Mandy. On the vehicle, um, just a question on use. You described a whole lot of uses. Is, has, have you ever thought of using or is it used for things like book deliveries to shut-ins or potential starts of bookmobiles to, you know, where you just take a bunch of books in the van to one of the apartment complexes or to, you know, green leaves or something. And, and if you've thought of that, is this van something that could be it could could be used for that, or is that not something that this could be used for? Let me. Uh, you can pipe in in a minute, George. So yes, the staff are. So here's one of the one of the great things about being kicked out of our building for two years, and and you know we don't know where we're going to be during this interim time, uh, but I have a feeling wherever we are, it's not going to be very pretty, um, and so it's and there's not going to be a lot of space, and so this is going to force staff to get out of the building and and do the programming wherever in parks and apartment complexes, schools, where, wherever it could be. So. Um, so yes, the van could be used for that. I think it's less about George and how he has been using this van and more about staff getting together and fill, figuring out logistically, you know, hey, George, we need the van from two to three every Thursday, that kind of a thing, because when our staff leave the building, they're not in the building. So it's, it's just more of a staffing issue and, and planning and, and, um, and all of that. But Yes, I love where your mind is going. So thank you. Uh, George, I didn't know if you wanted to tag on. Yeah, I'll just add on to that. Um, that was something that, that, that I had been thinking about. I mean, we have actually used the van to deliver books to people before. Um, because of the nature of how multifunctional we need the van to be, we wouldn't be able to set it up as a traditional style bookmobile with shelves and being able to walk into it and browse shelves. 
but it could certainly be used in that vein to bring materials to a location and maybe set something up. Um, and I had something else, where is it, my brain? Um, it's gone. Oh, and I was also gonna say the only other factor, like for regular library staff to use the van, they would just have to go onto the town system as, re as insured drivers, because uh, we keep a list as to not, not anybody can use one of the town one of the town vehicles. They have to be on the insured driver list. Um, so that would be the only other factor. Uh, any other questions? I have a couple of questions if no one else does. I'm just gonna wait. Okay, so first I'll start with the van. Um, I, as you were talking, George, I immediately thought of lease, um, given the maybe maybe there's one available, maybe there's not. Um, a son I have who lives in Europe finally got what he was asking for, but they said the seat won't be automatic, the back door won't be automatic because the chips for that aren't available. So do you want this vehicle or not? You know, so it wasn't exactly what they wanted, but they needed it. So would you, you might, would you, how will you make that decision? Because if you could lease, a uh, one year lease might get you out of this bottleneck that we're in right now. I mean, we don't know where we're going to be a year from now, but it might get you out of the bottleneck where even when you get the car, it doesn't have every, everything you thought you wanted on it, which right. is not. And and what they basically told them is you will never have it on this car because it would be eight thousand dollars to bring it back in and you know it's just won't be built it won't be built that way. Um, so so that was just a question on that decision that maybe in this case um, leasing might make sense if they're they're available. I guess that's what you're looking at. Yeah. Um... I can absolutely say that electric vans are not available for, for lease because they are brand new on the market and literally the year's allotment has pretty much been sold. Uh, so if we needed to say, if the van did not pass inspection and if we needed to lease, it would be a regular gasoline powered van. And I would wanna do it in a short enough term where we could get that electric van say in a year. Um, unfortunately, I just started looking into leasing because I haven't had a lot of time to prepare all of this. So I actually have a meeting with one of the vendors that's on the state bid list to discuss leasing and what the options are. So unfortunately I don't have any figures for that. Um, and I also needed to find out whether or not the town ever has a history of leasing vehicles, which they've looked into it before, but it's, it's kind of a gray area that it hasn't really been done. So we may be the trendsetters in that. But unfortunately, I just did not have figures for what that would cost to get us through a year. Okay, yeah, that was just a question. And then if it was a lease with the intention to buy and you're getting the cue of the buy list, you know, I mean, as you said, you know, trying to do the timing. So yeah, I would, I would, I would try to, I would try to allot money for the one year lease and then get the money in the five year plan to be able to buy the electric vehicle so that when they became available that we could do a PO and actually purchase it. Okay, so I, I will leave that on, on Sean's desk in terms of what might be possible. So, so my other question is about shelving. I did read what you'd written on the kind of shelving. When I've walked around Jones recently, like within the last couple of weeks, you have quite a bit of shelving that's empty. Am I right? Is that th that shelving wouldn't work for what you're we're talking about? Um, so, so I, I just, there's some that either has no books in it or very few books on it. So you don't have extra shelving in the building right now. And I'm partly thinking that you have a move, you're gonna be storing everything and then you're gonna be taking everything that is there, um, is there inventory within the building that could be used? I'm looking at George and Cindy. <laughs> um, I, can, I can answer that first, just, um, just to clarify, like any of the shelves that are in the library with books, the top shelves and the bottom shelves typically aren't used just because of ADA compliance. Um, but most of the shelves that are actually in the, the, the public parts of the library are either built-ins or they're built in such a way that they have to come out as a unit, otherwise they're not stable enough. Um, okay. We do have some spare stuff in the basement, but it's there's okay. nothing to build like complete units for shelving that would be safe and stable for, for the materials. Okay, thank you. Welcome. That's 
built-ins don't don't travel very well <laughs> by definition. So any other questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, and we look forward to the bookmobile. <laughs> Thank you all. So I'm not seeing any public. So I don't think we have public comments. And but anyone who wants to see minutes, by the way, we've been doing this expedited way of doing minutes. Um, we, uh, Jennifer prepared, as did Alex, excellent minutes. And we have been posting them as soon as we get them approved. And Sean, I don't know whether we sent everyone the minutes. What we could do each time, since people are getting them done so quickly, is when you send the materials, we could send the minutes if mm -hmm. everyone would like to see the minutes from the last meeting. Because, you know, I'm thinking particular this meeting, for me, thinking about our report, one of the things that came across is the town's innovation with Jeremiah of creating this building fund and maintenance fund is a big help for the fire department. So yeah. I hadn't thought I hadn't thought of it that way before, but to put- Yeah, just, just to clarify that. So the yeah. town is always, um, well, I don't know always, but the town has had a sort of general repair fund for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the part that has changed in recent years is that they've, they've sort of taken the fire department under their umbrella. In the past, the fire department sort of maintained their own stuff and, and they weren't generally included in that bucket of funds, but we expanded that bucket of money to include um, the fire stations. So, so it, that's really the only change was that they just, Jeremiah now helps oversee the maintenance for them. Because it felt like last year when Jeremiah was talking about the fund he'd put together and we asked him all the possible uses, um, maybe it wasn't innovation's not the right. He was thinking bigger and, and going around looking at all. Yeah, I think flexibility, we, as much as we can, we try to keep flexibility with those funds so that he can prioritize, you know, he's out there and knows what the highest priorities are and what's, um, you know, what needs to be addressed soonest. So I think the biggest thing is it just creates that flexibility for him to address all the buildings. Um, as, as needs arise. So then my second question is on this fluctuation of vehicles. We just had an extra request come to finance and then to yeah. the council because we had approved in a capital request a vehicle and it turned out we were way below the actual price. Well, yeah. What, what, uh, what do we have a plan? So yeah, wherever, was... wherever we end up in, in March, <laughs> just... what yeah. do we do if something changes between before June, for example? Yeah. You know? I was just thinking about that while um, everyone brought it up. Um, this committee may want to recommend, you know, we did a capital reserve fund a few years ago for the whole year. Um, we may want to do a much smaller version of that this year, sort of like a price fluctuation fund or something that's, you know, maybe $50,000 or something that's only used if estimates are coming in. Um, I mean, if, if, if we can get better estimates, we'll get better estimates, but maybe having some small pot of money to address that might not be a bad idea. Um, and then if it's, if everyone's estimates are good, we don't use it, it can close out at the end of the year. Um, Sonia's but, not shaking her head yet. So that's, yeah, she's, might, she's not looking. it might work. So, well, it depends on what kind of flexibility you want with that. If you if you um, set it aside as a budgeted reserve, right. you would still have to go to council and all the committees and public forums and everything because you would be adding another expenditure. But if you if you voted it as a line item for this purpose in the capital plan, then you could just take the funds as you needed it for for those different projects. Yeah. I think so we'd it depends want to do on the... what kind of flexibility you want yeah. with this. I think we'd want to do the latter because we're going to, mm. I don't think we'd want to do a hearing and then, you know, the right. time restraints that happen every time you have to, we do an appropriation um, because we're already doing that for these projects now. So, uh, right. so again, we don't have to do that, but it's something that um, to consider. But Sean, you've got a basically balanced budget that you brought before us. That would mean we have to carve a piece of money out. It could, um, we could also look, Sonia, to see if there's any closeouts in prior years that we could put towards this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we might be able to, you know, when, when projects don't use all their money, that we have sort of a, a small reserve that we can appropriate from. And so we might be able to pull it from that. Um, and really, that that's the intent of that money is if a project comes in under, then, or, or 
if we don't have enough funds to complete a project that was approved, then we can appropriate from that source. Um, so that might be a funding source for it. Okay, so I just want to mention those in terms of a, a report that we would be preparing with recommendations. So th these were a couple of things that occurred to me. Yeah, Anna. This is unrelated to that. So if Alex That's is- okay, I'm finished, yeah. Alex, is your comment about this? No. My is unrelated too, so go for it. Okay, so item one, um, did anyone notice when we lost Irv? Um, it was- put it in the minute, minutes. And I sometimes during the library, sometime during the library presentation. Thank you. Um, and then second thing, just about minutes. I'm not, I don't, we don't need to go back and, and change this, but my last name is Devlin Gothier, not just Gothier. So if folks can, I know it's longer, I'm sorry. Um, but if that can be reflected in minutes, that'd be great going forward. Thank you. Alex. Yeah, I just, um, one of the things that, um, both departments were talking about and sort of in response to Mandy Joe's question is, you know, I, at the beginning of JCPC, one of the things I often do is go back and read from the prior years to sort of figure out like what, what we kept kicking down the road. And I feel like, especially as the makeup of JCPC has changed, um, do we want to have some tool that allows us to have a sense of when things are being kicked down the road? And I guess, for me, there's two potential benefits to that. One is going in, you know, you know that say that the fire department's been asking for replacement of radios for four years and, you know, eventually we're going to have to deal with it. Or maybe it's also a tool of seeing where things are being kicked down the road. So perhaps they didn't have the priority that that department thought it did. And, and it, so I, I just, I don't know if there's a benefit to having that in a way where you don't have to do, you know, two hours of research to figure it out going into a meeting. It's just something we sort of start to maintain. It used to be done that way, um, right? Sonia, I mean, you used to do the color coding, the year was initially requested and then, um, yes. <laughs> so it's something we can consider, um, yeah. And Alex, I guess, did we do away with it for a reason is the question. I mean, you're right. Yeah, yes, I mean, I think it started getting, at least when I looked at it, it started getting sort of complicated when things would get pushed out multiple years um, to where I think it sort of lost the, um, you know, the goal of what it was trying to do. Um, so, and, and also and I, I think, and I, think I only, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I only bring it up because, um, you know, I think when I first joined JCPC, it wasn't necessarily like it was, it was a multicolored thing, but I don't think it was as big a deal. But in the last probably two fiscal years, we've done a lot of pushing down the road of vehicles and other things that are eventually going to come home to roost. And I think understanding sort of what those out years might realistically look like um, is important. So that's the only reason I bring it up. Yeah, I, I I think we did do a lot of pushing off. I will say, I think in the last two years, we've caught up a lot. I think we did a lot of vehicles um, last year and there's a lot of vehicles on the list this year. Um, I think when you look at the fire department in particular with the ladder truck, it sort of gets them up to schedule. I know it's gonna be a couple of years before it arrives, um, but I think we've caught up a lot in the last couple of years in terms of pushing things off, um, especially vehicles in particular. I'm not desirous of creating work for staff in the least. It was more just, would this be helpful? That's all. Mm -hmm. Mandy. Yeah, um, I was asking those questions because when I joined, which was slightly after Alex, um, we we got this list that was completely unbalanced, right? And And one thing that's happened by getting a balanced list is that we no longer get to see sort of the things that don't ever show up on the list. Um, you know, whereas we used to see the whole thing and then we'd see the change from, you know, a million unbalanced or a half a million unbalanced to balanced and be able to track what was pulled off. Now we don't get to see what was pulled off. Um, I don't know whether that's better or worse. I like seeing a balanced plan so that, you know, but maybe there's a way to track what the manager or you, Sean, in getting to the balanced sort of disappeared you know um, yeah I mean I think there's uh, a besides you've started some of that with the project the major projects that on that aren't on there but what vehicles got pushed off beyond FY27 right. or something and things yeah. like that maybe there's a way to have a nice balance between seeing a balanced plan and knowing what isn't being funded that was requested right 
No, I think you're right. There's probably a, a balance. I, there, there are some things that are just sort of manager decisions that are more about like just efficient use of resources that we don't want to send every single request to you because some of it's just we have a conversation with department head and they say that makes sense. And so um, so there's lots of little things like that. Um, we are trying to use that other section of the capital plan to list out those things that we can't fund. But I think there's probably more we can do there in terms of um, there's probably more projects that fall into that list than maybe what's there now. So we can look at that more. So thank you. I mean, we we just formed a few sections of our report, which is very useful. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Um, I think unless I see any other uh, hands up, I think we're finished for the evening. And, and Sean, I just really want to thank you so much for organizing the way you've organized. You've sure. both you've both figured out enough things to go on the agenda that we don't go well over, but that I don't feel like people are being rushed. They have their time to be enthusiastic and explain the request to us, which is terrific. Um, so thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sonia. You're welcome. Night, well, have a good night. We're adjourned. Bye, everyone.